Hey, let's talk about Olivia Vodarin uh, for a second. Olivia Vodarin was the first card I called a princess. And actually, uh, that was during the time that Twilight was very popular. I've never had a card make me as much money as a... Well, okay. I never had a card lessen the burden of buying decks as Olivia and Vodarin has. Because he's done it not once, but twice. So during... In a strat, during standard, she was a four to five dollar mythic for a very long time, and then she spiked to twenty dollars, and she actually saw a lot of play in modern in the Jun modern build. She was a boss against Jun when Jun was the number one deck, and why shouldn't she be? Uh, so at that time, she rose to twenty bucks. I probably buy listed them at like twelve bucks, and made you know double my money, and that was the first speculation I've ever really truly hit on on YouTube. I wish I had that video previously, but the video was so old and then the price dropped again. Obviously after rotation and after Jun was banned, the price plummeted again to $4. And at that time I said, oh, well, you know, Olivia is the original princess. I, she made me X amount of trade value, X amount of, you know, cash to buy other stuff with. I will double down on Olivia. And that's exactly what I did. I doubled down on Olivia, Stoneforge Mystic, and Philia, and also Malera. So two out of the four hit, you know, incredible highs. Um, Philia, I don't have any problem with. She doubled in price. What else can you want from that card? Malera, that was a princess that I don't feel like, I, I don't feel like it has a home yet. Um, and it's very weird because Malera Pod is named after her and it was the number one deck obviously before the banning and still when it was the number one deck, it, the card was like a $1.50 or something and it's still $1.50 today. But Olivia Vodarin, wow. I've never seen a card go up so high, go down, and now go up again. And I've never owned a card like this before. I've owned a ton of cards. A ton of them, but Olivia Vodarin, I've never seen anything like it. Like, it's fascinating. It is appealing to me because she is the original princess. When you talk about these cards I love to death, Olivia Vodarin is the first card. It wasn't Philia, it wasn't Stoneforge, it wasn't Archangel, it wasn't Elspeth, it wasn't Voice. It was Olivia Vodarin. So if you ask me how many Olivia's I own, I can tell you I own a lot of them. A lot of them. And especially once the price plummeted, the foil didn't go down that much, but the regular one like plummeted to oblivion. And at that point I was like, okay, double down. Yeah, it's a $16 card now. Uh, I, I, I don't know what else to say about Olivia except, wow. Um, I don't feel like I would ever hit on a card like this again. Not again, like not two times in a row. That is just to me insane that she goes to four to 20 and now back to four and now eventually I think she'll hit 20. And Olivia Vodarin, <laughs> the original princess, um, she was. The original card that I collected, I hoarded, I sold. I realized, hey, this is not bad. And then I double down on Olivia. And um, I, I will go to storage sometime this month and I will just figure out like what cards. I, I have a ton of the fast lands in storage because I put them in storage because I felt like they were not doing so well. But I need to go to storage and I need to visit a store in Houston and that's what I'm going to do. But Olivia Vodarin, wow. Yeah, I'm very, very proud of this one.